for you. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, good evening, friends. Uh, welcome to this uh, February monthly meeting of uh, Cochin of Thalmi Club. Uh, as in every month, we have been uh, quite active in spite of not having our physical meetings. Uh, we have <coughs> made sure that we have our regular Super Sundays, uh, our regular monthly meetings, uh, and all the activities that we normally do. Uh, this month, we have decided to have uh, a non-ophthalmic uh, talk, but something which is very, very relevant to every one of us, to each one of us in our family, to our friends, our relatives. Uh, this is uh, on fire safety. And uh, who else to uh, talk better on this than Dr. Rajiv Jayadevan, uh, who has done extensive work on, on fire safety, uh, on uh, vehicle safety, uh, he's a trainer uh, for, for all this. So uh, we are in, indeed extremely uh, happy to have uh, Dr. Rajiv with us today. Uh, he'll be officially introduced by our secretary, Dr. Gopal. So with these few, with this few words of introduction, uh, I hand over proceedings to Dr. Gopal. He will just brief you about the activities of the previous month, uh, this month, and uh, some of the things that we have planned for March. Uh, and then uh, we'll officially introduce Dr. Rajiv Jayadevan to the audience, and then we can get on with the talk uh, from Dr. Rajiv. Dr. Gopal, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sai uh, It's indeed a pleasure to have all of us back uh, again. Uh, so I will just uh, share my screen. Oops. Okay, so after the last year's, uh, I hope you are able to see my screen, after the last year's Christmas uh, party that we had on December 23rd, we started with the World Braille Day celebration, the low vision course, where the World Braille Day lecture was delivered by Dr. Alexander Sir and uh, Dr. Niranjan, and Dr. Geeta, a lot of people contributed to this particular lecture. And then on uh, 17th of January, we went into Ignite, uh, Amrita's flagship program for UVITIS, where all the uh, national faculty from the UVITIS Society of India participated, and there was a huge rheumatology UVITIS uh, discussion on this. Almost all the stars of UVITIS in the country had participated in this. And then in January 24th, we went into Frequently, frequently asked questions in glaucoma, which is our Noel, uh, Dr. Noel Monage Memorial Lecture and CME, where Dr. Devendra Sur, the past president of the Glaucoma Society of India, delivered the Dr. Noel Monage Memorial Lecture. And uh, again, uh, it had all the junior stars of uh, glaucoma participating in this. And then on January 26th, we had our children uh, come up with a lot of activities on the Republic Day, and uh, even our stars had a Republic Day dance. And then, because the All India Ophthalmic Society called for uh, glaucoma awareness, we responded with a host of uh, glaucoma videos which would educate patients. And then, on World Cancer Day, on February 7th, we had a COC Super Sunday Series Ocular Oncology Update on February 7th. We had all the prominent ocular oncologists from the country, right from Dr. A.K. Clover to our own Dr. Firehouse. Now, today, we are going on with fire and safety for your family with Dr. Rajiv Jayadevan. And uh, this is going to be an eye opener for all of us. And I have indeed uh, forwarded this to each and every family member and family groups on the WhatsApp. Next week, uh, 28th uh, this Sunday, we invite you to this CME uh, by Little Flower Eye Hospital, in which uh, uh, there is going to be a pan-India UVME from 10 different states. Uh, people are presenting uh, UVI cases. So this would be our uh, 
past uh, and the immediate future. Now, March is going to be World Glaucoma Week celebrations and we are going to do a lot of things. And uh, all the Cochin of Thalmic members, please tell us what all things we can do to actually improve the particular uh, situation. Uh, we are also having a postgraduate exam, a mock exam on March 7th, uh, which will be conducted by uh, Dr. Vanati, who is professor at the RP Center, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, and uh, Dr. Kulkarni, who is in VH. So there are lots of other programs to come. Each month is filled with a lot of programs. So here I stop sharing, and I would like to introduce our speaker for the day, Dr. Rajiv Jayadevan, who has been a real uh, wonderful person. He has been talking, we have been uh, seeing him, uh, we have been reading his, whatever he has written in COVID, fire safety, vehicle safety. Uh, he has been a very, very impressive person who has researched deep into whatever he is speaking. Dr. Rajiv Jayadevan completed his MBBS and MD General Medicine from the Christian Medical College, Velu, India in 1995. He was awarded the MRCP, Edinburgh in 1996. He underwent training in clinical epidemiology and public health at the Erasmus University, Rotterdam, Netherlands. He obtained broad certifications in medicine and gastroenterology from New York Medical College and spent three years in the UK and 10 years in the US before returning to his hometown, Ernakulam, to bless us with more of his uh, uh, actions. He's a gastroenterologist, a grassroots level, social worker, public educator, researcher, mentor, writer, author, and speaker, all coined into one particular person. Uh, he spent in his spare times, he volunteers to teach in schools and assorted health topics directly impacting the students of all ages. He writes on complex health issues very simply. And his detailed analytical reports of 70 assorted health issues are available in the net. His book, Think Like a Doctor, has been released. Having championed several social causes, including prevention of road accidents, noise pollution, teen alcoholism, substance abuse, uh, Dr. Rajiv Jayadevan was the president of the IMA Cochin from 2019 to 20. He started several new initiatives as the president of the IMA Cochin, including the JCP IMA, the Journal of Clinical Practice for Doctors, the IMA Job Bank for Doctors, the Doctors Welfare Wing, etc. He has been the uh, IMA State Convener for Communication Skills Training for Doctors for the past, past five years. During this particular pandemic, he has written every, every couple of days, he will write one new, very, very researched article, which actually helps us make a lot of informed decisions. His academic track record is exceptional. He was a Kerala State Assistancy Rank Holder in 1984 and Kerala State Medical Entrance Rank Holder in 1986. After playing some first in the class for the final MBBS exam, he went on to win Madras University MGR gold medal and MD General Medicine in 1995. So we have in our midst a living legend and uh, my classmate. And over to you, Dr. Rajiv Jayadevan, and we are all eager to hear you. Yes, okay. Thank you uh, for, the, for the introduction. Very kind of you. Uh, let me see if I can, are you able to see, uh, let me just share my screen. Are you able to see the screen? Yes. Yes. And can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Is, is that, is that okay? Can you see me? Can you see uh, everything now? Yeah. 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 All right. So an honor to be invited and, uh, and this is a topic that I believe is uh, one of the life skills that everybody ought to have. Uh, I heard the mention about my road safety work. There are several several life skills that a human being ought to have, which starts with CPR. You know, you remember the health pearls I had set out during my term as president. The first pearl I sent out, I believe, was do people around you know how to do CPR? I know it sounds a little scary. It doesn't matter if you know how to do CPR. What matters is if at work, the people around you know how to do it. And uh, you, you just have to you know, train people and get it done. And that's a very important point because um, while you may be the perfect person to instruct people, if you, God forbid, have a problem or if I have a problem, I should have people resuscitate me and people make all sorts of mistakes with CPR and the slightest mistake 
and the slightest delay for even a minute can make a big difference. So that was the first tip I sent out as president, because I thought that was very important for, for doctors and their families. So this can be taught uh, to the families as well as for uh, the staff at the workplace. And periodic reminders are helpful every three months because uh, memory uh, can play tricks on us. The second life skill I've concentrated on is road safety. I think many of you have seen uh, my works on road safety and as uh, secretary of IMA uh, had championed that cause, mainly about how we can use the road safely rather than try to you know, instruct the government, basically uh, defensive drivings of sorts, but having full command of the physics, the chemistry, uh, biology, and the psychology of road use, both as a motorist as well as a pedestrian. So those were a couple of the other ones. And this fire safety is another very fascinating topic. I have done two of these. One is uh, the module that I'm presenting here. And there's another one that I have, which is about forest fires. So that, that is uh, for, the, for the adventurers. Forest fires is another fascinating topic. But this, uh, during this session, I'll, I will not talk about forest fires. So we'll talk about uh, what each one of us can, uh, can, can learn and remember. And as I mentioned earlier, after a lecture, memory will fade. And after about three months, very little will be remembered except for the fact that somebody talked about fire. And at that point, uh, there will be a couple of reminders that I will I will present through my lecture and at least two reminders are there for the long run. So if you can keep those in mind, the remaining, um, you know, will we'll either come back when it's needed or you could just Google my name, uh, that's Rajiv J. Devan and put in the keyword fire safety. You can see a, a very detailed article that I've written and all the slides I'm presenting today are the slides that I've inserted in my article. I've written around 60 health topics, 60 or 70 thereabouts, and this is one of those. And each of my articles is written in such a way that anyone can give a lecture on it. So that's the way I've formatted it. Each of them will have plenty of pictures. So if any of you would like to speak about fire safety, you could use my slides and you could uh, see my article, read it, and also uh, use the references on it. You will remember uh, this news, which is a positive news. A 10-year-old girl from Mumbai uh, became a hero. Uh, this was from two years ago when a high-rise fire broke out in Mumbai. And in fact, it, is, it was yet another high-rise high, uh, high, high fire that broke out in Mumbai, tragically. But this, uh, the, this little girl, her presence of mind and the fact that she was able to lead all the all her family members and their neighbors to safety. So she was in the national news. I'm sure all of you caught that story. I had uh, shared the story on my Facebook wall as well. So the model was that this girl was taught fire safety in school. Her teacher taught her some basic things and she she just used it when there was a need and no one else could remember anything about fire in spite of living in a high rise building. So a couple of things she did was she taught the people because there was plenty of smoke. She taught the people how to wet a piece of cotton and then cover the nose so that the carbon and the soot will not come in. And she also calmed them down because people can panic. And then she also turned off the main switch. So these are some of the some of the basic things, but unless we know what to do, uh, we will not be able to do it. So I'll take you back to a bit of memory um, for my case. Uh, that was in um, the 9-11, you know, when the World Trade Centers collapsed in New York. I happened to be training in New York at that time. I happened to be in a hospital in the Bronx. I was doing uh, my fellowship, gastroenterology fellowship, when the plane struck the tower. So uh, one of the lessons, there are many lessons that came from the 9-11 tragedy, but one of the stories is, you remember when the, when the plane struck the first tower, uh, there was a lot of misinformation and people didn't know what was happening. So there were, there were thousands of people in the World Trade Center. It's a huge, huge building. And it was, it was morning hours. And I remember it was a you know, bright sunny day and, um, 
we were all scoping at the, on, on, on our fifth floor at the, in the Bronx Hospital. But the, the story I want to present here is when the, fi when the fire broke out on the top floor, you know, when the plane hit, there were some people in the building who decided that they will exit the building. They knew there was a fire in the in one of the floors, and they took the fire exit down. They walked, you know, World Trade Centers are on 110 stories, so they walked all all those floors down, maybe 30, 40 floors down, and they just got out of the building and they left. The remaining ones, what they did was they just stood frozen. They did not know what to do. Many of them were in denial. Many of them said that it is probably nothing. And then as the situation worsened, they knew there was a problem and they froze even more. They froze into inactivity. Uh, they froze to a point that they had to be, uh, many, they had to follow instructions and instructions kept coming in through the overhead speakers. And unfortunately the instructions were wrong. The instructions were to stay where you are. So these poor people, unfortunate people, they stayed where they were while they still had the window to escape. I know it's easy to look back at a tragedy and say, hey, we should have done this, we should have done that. But the moral of the story was, if you knew what to do, you will know what to do at the right moment. Because when an emergency strikes, we don't have time to think. And that is what uh, I've, in fact, I've mentioned it previously in one of my other, other works. You might have seen my module on self-defense. Uh, self-defense has got nothing to do with karate, but in self-defense, I've made the statement that is, when an emergency happens, when a sudden crisis happens, something that happens over a period of seconds to minutes, our brain undergoes what's called a cortical freeze. Remember all the intellectual matter, all the intellectual processes are happening in the cortex. When an emergency happens, our cortex is, goes through a complete blackout and we act according to what is called trained motor skills. So for example, if a vehicle is crashing, if a person knows how to shield his head or her, her head, they will do the maneuver and, and shield the head. But if you don't know what to do, you'll be frozen and your brain is blacked out, your thought process is blacked out, you don't know what to do. So that is, that's the point here. Fire safety is self-training. And if you do self-training and if we read it often, even teach a little bit, if and when the need arises, our brain will not undergo a full blackout. We will know what to do. There will be some cortical activity left even when there's a blackout, some cortical activity will be there. You'll be able to think your way out. So you will see as we go through this module, you'll see some of those things that requires prior knowledge to escape. The 9-11 story was those who knew a basic prior knowledge. If a building is on fire, you don't wait, you get out. All right, That's a very basic principle. You don't need a PhD for that. All right. So, uh, so that is the that is the principle of this. The fundamental flaw with human beings is that we always believe hap accidents only happen to other people, and that is again a problem with road safety as well. Road safety is if you look at the behavior of people on the road, they behave as though accidents will not happen to them, so they can do whatever they want, and it's always somebody else's fault. So that mindset has to change. And I'll present this dumb logic that I've seen in many places. The dumb logic is when you talk about fire safety, you'll say, we've never had a fire here, so we must be safe. So what are you talking about? So this is the problem. See, when uh, when you take any building or any, any house or institution, what matters is, are you prepared if a problem happens? It's not whether it's already happened. All right? So this is why it's called dumb logic. All right? This is, We see it all the time. So this may be applied to fire and may be applied to so, so many other things like CPR and other things. We've not had a fire, so so why, why are we bothered? It's when you haven't had a fire, when you need to train your staff or your family. These are some survival tips from an expert. 
survival tips for any situation. He said three things. A man called Warren Fadley. He is a disaster expert. So he said, know what possible dangers could arise in your area. Whatever area it may be, you may be working in a school, you may be at home, you may be on a first floor building, wherever. Wherever you are, most part of the day, just figure out what are the possible dangers, you know, mentally. Second, once you figure out what can go wrong, know what to do for each one of them. It's a very simple logic, actually. And third, don't delay. If you have to act, act now. Don't wait on it. So that those are some fundamental survival tips. It may seem deceptively simple, but it summarizes what I said in the first five minutes. Now, this is one of my take-home messages. No matter where you go in the world, wherever you are, especially in if, if you are in a building that you're not familiar with, the first principle is, do you know all the exits? And I remember as a kid walking into Shainoy's theater, you know, the, the old Shainoy's theater when we walked up the ramp, and there were these glowing lamps that said exit, exit. In fact, as a kid, I didn't, I didn't even know what the word exit meant. So, uh, so we know these words, right? But they're there for a reason. See, exits are always signposted. And even if there's a blackout, there's a power failure, they're supposed to stay uh, illuminated. So wherever we go, if it's a hotel, especially, if it's a hotel, if it's a resort, if it is a high rise building, a new office, one must know all the exits. And this is, again, I'm overlapping onto my self-defense module. Very, very important. When you're in an unfamiliar territory, if something doesn't look right, you should know where the exit is because the exit is what saves you, not your fighting skills, all right? Uh, some of you, I think, have attended my self-defense module and uh, the first principle of self-defense is if you see trouble, run away. Don't hang around, all right? So that's very important. Same thing with fire. If you think you are at risk, run. Get out of there. And to get out of there, Prior knowledge is important because when a fire breaks out, it is not the flames that kill us. It is the crowd. It is a stampede. It is a smoke. You can't see a thing. People are screaming around you and it's complete darkness. All right. So it can be a very scary situation. So wherever we go, make sure we know where the exits are and also do a little bit of mind thinking if you can close your eyes, can you find your way, way back out of the building? I know it sounds a little extreme, like a commando, like, you know, like Jason Bourne, but you know what? We can, we can, we can train ourselves to do this. All right, so if you forget everything else that I said, just remember this, wherever you are, do you know the exits? All right. And can you reach it when there's no light and there's smoke around you? Are you able to do that? This is called the fire triangle. Fire triangle is best remembered as foo. Like, you know, when there's fire, we say foo, foo, okay? It's P-H-O. So it is uh, fuel for F, heat, and oxygen. So the, the three, these three things are needed for a fire to break out. The principle of fire management is if you can take away one of those, you may be able to control it. So. Oxygen is air, and fuel can be anything. It can be gas, it can be oil, it can be anything. And a heat source is as listed. It can be you, you're lighting a fire or whatever. So that is a so that's a fire triangle. Let's go, let's let's uh, take a scenario. Right? Let's uh, we are cooking in the kitchen. Or you're alone, and suddenly the wok it catches fire. Fire comes out of the wok. There's oil in the fire, it got overheated, and suddenly there's fire coming out of the wok. What do you do? Would, if anyone would like to answer, I'd like to hear that. No, it's not baking soda, all right? You're not gonna, you're not gonna look for baking soda, you're not gonna find it. Um, so I, uh, is there any feedback, audio feedback in the program? I mean, um... Only we you, can say. Can anyone from the audience? Uh, you know, it's nice to yeah, you can put water. 
you can walk with water okay that's one uh, anyone else cover it with a cover it with a bigger pot absolutely port. yeah i would that's i would i would take option 2 cover it because you want to you want to block the oxygen supply remember the fire triangle is fu fho is you want to cut the oxygen out the easiest thing we can cut is oxygen all right or air so if fire is coming out put a lid on it all right so that is most most housewives apparently know this and uh, if you can't get a perfect lid just put whatever you can on it you can put a even you can put even your dinner plate on it because you know it will cover it will just shut off the oxygen supply so that is the first aid for a kitchen fire it's recommended you don't use water because water will splash the uh, the burning oil outside it may actually come and scald scald you so we don't want that we all remember her and we know how she died she died about 7 years ago from a um, from a lamp that was kept open kept uh, kept on um, it was in, in her puja room and it caught uh, it caught her sari and um, she just um, she succumbed to the burns so the the greatest principle there is got up the great principle here is never leave an open flame unattended so principle number 2 one know where your exits are number 2 at home for whatever reason do not leave an open flame unattended i know it sounds a little impractical but it's helpful to know because it is these open flames that suddenly turn into big flames and fire see miss sukumari would have never even dreamt of dying from fire people dream people imagine themselves dying of heart attacks and other things but fire is not the last thing we dream of dying from but 20000 people die every year in india from domestic fires 20000 people in india <clears throat> so let's um go through a bit of gas cylinder fire all right so we're all scared of gas cylinders you know gas cylinders uh, they uh, we keep hearing news of gas cylinders exploding and stuff like that so there was a cool video i wanted to show you but i'm very sorry uh, that noise that is being created was from the video so i had to cut it <clears throat> so basically it's like this imagine a gas cylinder that's open and uh, it's on fire you know when fire happens it's like it's like a there is a flame at the mouth of the gas cylinder the gas cylinder is like this flame there's a flame at the fire at the at the top of the gas cylinder if you don't know what to do you'll be scared and you know you, you may panic and do all the wrong things so can anyone tell me what to do if a gas cylinder is suppose the the tubing is gone and it is just sitting and burning and you don't know what to do can anyone tell me would anyone like to volunteer can can i get some audio you have to cover the gas cylinder absolutely dr narangudi said it and specifically you will cover it with a wet cloth take a towel or a munda or whatever it is throw some water on it and just cover the gas cylinder you you're just cutting off oxygen and uh, and miraculously it will stop if you don't do it the gas cylinder will get heated up see a fire itself on a gas cylinder is not dangerous because it's very easy to either turn the gas cylinder off but we may not be able to do it if you can't turn the gas cylinder off just take a wet cloth and and wrap it up there is a, there is a video about some firefighters from from kerala they are doing it doing a demo video and that demo video i'll show you the the slides from it see this okay so that is a uh, these are clips that i took from the video Uh, you see the gentleman is actually you can see the gas cylinder say so he's carrying a wet cloth like a munda and he's covering it wrapping it nicely and uh, see that's a fire he's wrapping it all right so that is a, that is how you put off a put out a gas cylinder fire either you can turn it off if you catch it early enough or it, or if it's actually on fire you cover it with a, uh, i know it's, it may not be practically possible each time but it's at least helpful to know in the back of your mind when i gave a talk uh, for the indian oil company they they wanted me to give a talk to promote um, gas uh, lpg use recently 
and uh, it is basically to reduce atmospheric pollution and to improve the socioeconomic status of the below poverty line people uh, because they were still using firewood and so on so i was talking a little bit on lpg <clears throat> now in appreciation of my talk they sent me a gift so i opened the gift and it was a gown you see the gown that the woman is wearing in the picture and this is a powerful tool that will protect oneself while alone in the kitchen see um, any loose pieces of our attire can theoretically catch fire and we may not even know it because sometimes the fire can we can, can can slowly climb from behind us and especially if we are alone we will not see it and now can i just post one more question to the audience theoretically theoretical question say you are alone in the house you are alone in the kitchen and your sari has just caught fire what do you do just lie down and roll absolutely dr arangade says it's important to know this ahead of time because that is very specific it's a very specific action if you don't know it it it's, it can actually burn your body all right the correct thing as dr arangade said is just calmly lie down on the ground and do a shayana pradikshanam that is you just roll on the ground the fire will stop because again you're cutting off oxygen see the fire triangle about oxygen oxygen is the easiest thing we can cut off so teach this to your children as well if if ever that happened now let's take the reverse scenario suppose you did not know this or the person did not know this guess what they will do when the sari catches fire they will run out and guess what happens when they run when they run out more oxygen comes in right because whenever fire burns it's consuming oxygen so the atmospheric oxygen comes down and the fire dies down but if you're running out the fire is happy because fire is getting fresh oxygen so if there is somebody else with you they can just cover your uh, body with a sheet or something like that or uh, with a with a sack or a table cloth or something right so that, that's again the principle is cut off the oxygen source cut off the air so i already showed this <clears throat> so generally speaking uh, in a building when we live in a building many people live in apartment complexes so people who live in apartment complexes or work in <clears throat> high rise buildings should really know these you must really know where the fire hydrants are and uh, if possible you should know how to turn them on they all of them have a little bit of a a tap like device and we should know how to use a fire extinguisher i'll come to that in a minute and uh, each high rise building must compulsorily do fire drills see when i was in the western nations there would be fire drills and fire drills are compulsory so i you know when having just gone there from india i thought it's a pretty silly thing to do because you know when you go when you go away from india you think everything we are doing is right and what they are doing is wrong so they would call for a fire drill and i i would i would think why are you doing a fire drill when there's no fire see that is exactly the point you, that's a, that's a point when we should be doing a fire drill they should know how you should know how to evacuate the building where the exits are and what to do if there's a fire so take fire drill seriously and maybe you could take a lead in your own workplace and and organize a fire drill it will just be a very nice team building exercise also and uh, every high rise building is expected to have minimum space around it which is always kept free for a fire fire truck to drive around it you can imagine how many times this is violated and uh, there must be a minimum width to the approach road now let's go through a fire extinguisher a fire extinguisher again is a life skill operating it is a life skill it's got a universal language so you really, really do not need to you know if you are in germany and then you suddenly see a fire extinguisher it, it is it will show exactly the same thing so you really you really do not need to know the language when you see a fire extinguisher but i'll take you through the parts of a fire extinguisher first thing to know is wherever you work you must know where the nearest fire extinguisher is and keep an eye on it and the thing you keep an eye on 
you see the you see the dial on the top right you see the the needle the needle should stand at the green zone now the moment the, the needle goes away from the green zone you know the charge is gone whatever was charged in the device the device is empty so please make sure that wherever you see your fire extinguisher the needle is in the green territory so that's the most important thing most fire extinguishers now are multi purpose okay multi purpose means that you can there are different kinds of fires i'll go to that there are there's like class a class b class c there are different kinds of fires but if you see the picture of the fire extinguisher can you see a b and c listed on it i've actually circled it with a with a yellow circle so i have noted that this extinguisher is good for class a b and c fires and when when there's fire going on you really can't go and read up the classification of fires so there is a photo, there's a picture on it there are some kind of fires are say paper fires paper and wood it's a separate it's you can it's easy can it's easy to pour water on it and you can kill the fire but what if it's in what if it's a computer that suddenly uh throws a fire what do you do we'll come to that and uh, what if it's oil that's burning you can't throw wa water on oil right so that is when you need a fire extinguisher so again those are the parts of the fire extinguisher you see the bottom um you see the bottom dial you can see the dial here and you can see the handle and the handle will always have a pin in between so if there's a handle there'll be a pin in between and that pin has to be removed and then you can squeeze the handle so the handle has to be squeezed like this all right <clears throat> so uh this is a graph you can actually look this up it's all also on my article the all these slides are from my article and uh, there are various types of fire extinguishers but briefly just look at the fire extinguisher you'll know what it is meant for this is a this is an acronym we use it's called pass p a s s which is pull the pin aim the fire extinguisher okay you got to aim it you got to aim it and most people make the mistake of aiming it to the top of the fire all right you got to aim it to the bottom of the fire it's called the aim at the base of the fire and the thing most people do not know is that this fire extinguisher will only last you about 30 seconds so if you get it wrong it's like you you have a gun with just one bullet in it you get one shot to fire it you get one chance to fire it and if you miss the gun is empty it's something like that the fire extinguisher it only lasts approximately 30 30 seconds all right so the point here is if you're using it use it well like if you if you got only one bullet and a lion is charging at you or a, or 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 a, or a wild animal is charging at you and you're certain that you'll you'll die you have one bullet you got it you better get it right right same thing when you use a fire extinguisher you must aim it at the base and at the base from a distance of about 8 feet all right of course it's a very large fire you don't even try that we'll come to that but again let's assume it's a smaller fire it's in a building it's a short circuit there's a computer that's burning away the table is slowly starting to burn the paper is burning and uh, it still it still looks controllable and you're the only person on the scene you know how to operate it stay about 10 feet away make sure you know where the exit is all right do not attempt to treat a fire if you can't get out of it alive never never try to be a hero with a fire extinguisher the first thing to do is to escape but if you can't you know if you think you can put it out make sure you know where the escape is so uh, pass is uh, pull the pin aim the fire extinguisher squeeze the handle and sweep from side to side you do this movement right So most people I've seen this I've, I've made people do this most people make the mistake one they stand too far away and they think this is some sort of a fire hose it is not a fire hose it is on you're done and the, the second mistake they do is they keep on pressing from too far they'll stand very far away and press because it's of no use whatever compound is in the extinguisher has to hit the fire which is why I use the example of the gun with just one bullet so that's a fire extinguisher and i said bro as i said, said before please don't be a hero all right just run when in doubt you run because a fire extinguisher is only meant for immediate detection of fires if you see a fire that just happened and you know you can put it out and you know you can escape yes do it but if you see a very large fire you don't go there and try to be a hero with a fire extinguisher that's what i meant all right if it's a very large fire 
run outside and call the fire brigade and they'll come and take care of it. And of course, rescue other people. This is this is what my article looks like. Just Google Rajiv Jai Devan fire safety. It's actually, it's got about 20 references as well. Now let's go through another question. You're staying in a hotel, you're in the room and the alarm goes off. It's night, all is dark, the power supply is out. Emergency light is not coming on. All you have, all you have is your mobile phone and the light. What do you do? Just imagine the scenario. I know it's scary. You're on the 10th floor. You can't jump down. And alarm is going off. People are rushing outside. People are screaming outside. And you can smell smoke. What do you do? Just think for a moment. Put yourself in that situation. Because as I said before, unless you know what to do ahead of time, you'll panic and do all the wrong things. Close the windows and doors. Absolutely. And put, uh, the thing that kills you is the smoke, not the fire. Right? That's the first principle I want to just emphasize here. When we hear about fires, you know, you see the movies when you know you see the heroes running through fires, but it is really not the fire that kills people. Most people die from smoke inhalation. And as Dr. Gobal said, the best way to keep fire and smoke out is close the door. And if there's a gap below, what do we do with the gap? You have your bed sheets, right? Run to the bathroom, fill the bathtub if there's a bathtub, otherwise fill the bucket with water, wet the sheet and roll it up into a nice little, you know, roll and put it under the, under the door so that smoke doesn't come into your room. Your objective is your safest place at that point, if you can't, if everything is dark and you don't know what to do, your safest point is still inside the room because you get, you have a chance of being rescued from the outside. You stand a chance. But if you're so clever, you know all the fire exits and you escape out of the room. The fire is not very much. You can see the smoke throughout the corridor. What do you do if there is smoke? Can someone tell me? You're outside. You remember you're outside. Of, you've just come outside the room. You see a lot of smoke you can't see. What do you do? Chief. Smoke Point near the floor. Absolutely. Smoke always rises to the top. Your chance of breathing and surviving is if you collapse onto the floor and breathe air which is closest to the floor. So you can actually crawl your way and your chance of surviving is a lot more if you crawl rather than if you walk. If you walk through the smoke, you're, you're going to be hitting people. You may hit a wall. You may get knocked unconscious. Drop onto the floor. You'll invariably find fresh, fresh air there. All right. So that's again... Trivia to know because when an emergency happens, we don't have time to think. So we should know what to do. And you're crawling on the ground, you see a door. Will you open it? Yes or a no? <clears throat> you're crawling on the ground and you want to get out, you you you, you suddenly you come across a door. Do you think you should open the door and get out? Feel There's something smoke we do. Is coming out the door. Because Feel smoke is coming out of the door. Not only that. We should check the check the door to see if it's hot. Because sometimes the door is protecting you from the fire coming this side, right? You open, open the door, you're going to be consumed. So that's called a backdraft. You There's a famous movie also called Backdraft, which came out, I mean, TAV and I were in CMC Villa. We went to the Necker and saw that movie. We didn't understand anything because the audio was so bad. But Backdraft is a movie about, basically about this phenomenon. You know, when you open something, there's so much... Uh, of a pressure difference that you get killed instantly. All right, so that's backdraft. So touch the door, touch the handle. All right, the handle is typically metal, whereas the door is wood, you may not feel the heat. The handle is typically metal. So there's heat outside the door, you can feel it on the handle. All right, so that is, those are some tips. If the door is safe, you can open the door, check everything, see if you know the exit and get out. And uh, what if not, none of this works? You're stuck in your room, what do you do? The, remember, now you have to see it from the firefighter standpoint. You're stuck in a room. You got to give a signal out to the firefighter, right? How do you how do you tell somebody you're in a room? There are there are 150 rooms in a in a high rise building. It's dark. Can anyone guess? Your mobile phone. Again. Absolutely. Or you have a flashlight. If you have a flashlight, just wave the flashlight. Or if it's a daytime, they can't see the flashlight. You take your bed sheet out and just hang it outside the window. 
when you hang the head sheet uh, bed sheet outside the window it's a signal that you want to be rescued you're there you're alive and you want to be rescued so those are ways that we can communicate with people um, without actually uh, you know sometimes even when there's so much confusion and when there's a uh, shortage of uh, people, they may not know what to do. So uh, again, those are some of the tips again. So this is a picture of a fire door and a fire door, as I said, we've seen a hundred doors like this in our life, but remember the purpose of this door is to keep fire away, all right? So when you're leaving the building, if it's burning, keep closing the doors behind you because that will protect uh, the people from, uh, you know, when the fire from spreading. So we talked about fire drills. Dr. Gobal, now we are 7.52, so you can tell me when to stop, so I can plan it accordingly. How much time do we have left? You can go till about 8.15, 8.20. okay. So we'll... Uh, we'll yeah, yeah, we've go got 15, 11. 20 minutes more. Yeah. 8.15, all right. Good. Remember, whenever you escape from your house, please do not forget your pets, all right? The pets are terrified. It may be a cat, maybe a dog, it may be a hamster, whatever it is. Remember to have a plan for your pet as well. So we saw uh, how people treated their pets when the flood came. You know, many people took good care of their pets. You know, they carried them on their head. So please do not forget the pets. So when we when we plan a fire drill at home, those who have pets keep a pet plan as well. And again, this is this is a fact. Everybody knows this, but people still do it. So when there's a fire in a building, you should never ever get into a lift. Why? because the lift may be working, but suddenly there will be a power failure and you'll be stuck and you'll be roasted. You'll be roasted alive inside the lift. You'll be baked because the fire will consume it. There's no way you can escape. So even if the lift appears to be working, remember once you get in, it may malfunction and you're trapped. You'll never escape. So never ever use the lift. All right. So this is again, uh, when you go to any fire safety class, they'll take you through this. Race, they, they like all these acronyms, you know. So it's good to know these. Pass is one for the fire extinguisher, pass. And race is the other one. That is, what are the things we do if there's a fire? Remove whoever. So if there's someone who's old and frail or a child, remove them from danger. They cannot. They may not be able to rescue, rescue themselves. You alert the people nearby that there's a fire. You can't find the fire. Remember the fire doors and things like that. You can't find the fire and smoke by closing the doors and windows as you escape. As you leave the building, Keep the doors closed. If, if there is a door that is kept open, just kick it closed. And uh, also extinguish a fire, but only if, only if you're absolutely sure you can escape if you can't control it. And also if you're detected early. If you don't detect a fire early, you can never put it out on your own. So remember, a fire extinguisher at the workplace is only for the early fire. It is not for a massive fire. Very important distinction. A big fire is for the firefighter, not for us. So uh, Dr. Narayan Guti talked to, talked to us about the stop, drop, and roll. You can see the pictures, drop to the ground, and um, roll over. And this I mentioned about uh, when you're stuck in a building and uh, there's fire in the building, it's the smoke that kills us. So do whatever we can to keep the smoke out. And smoke, if you can, as you can see from the picture, smoke is always at the top half of the room. This kind of news, unfortunately, keeps coming up. I think an incident also happened in Munar not so long ago. Elderly couple dies in sleep because cold heater kept in the room. And this particular couple, unfortunate, I think they were in their late 60s to early 70s. They were not old at all. And they were sleeping and they decided to keep a cold heater under the bed. So the cold heater consumed all the oxygen um, in the room. And uh, once the once the coal started consuming um, um, more and more oxygen, it ran out of oxygen to consume, so it started using less and less oxygen. And then what do you get? You get CO instead of CO2. So CO is carbon monoxide. It's a colorless, odorless gas that binds to our hemoglobin. It literally uh, suffocates uh, our body to death. So that is, uh, again, when you're in a cold, when you when you visit a cold place, wherever, say you go to Shimla or Darjeeling or Munar or wherever it is, and if they're trying to keep your room warm, remember, if you're in a closed room and you keep a cold heater, you could be dead uh, by the time they, they discover you in the morning. 
So these are some pictures, these are some common tips. This is like a summary slide I've created uh, for people at home. So it's about why fires occur at home. Common blunders, I've listed, listed them as blunders. It's easy to remember. One, walking away from a stove with an open flame. A stove with an open flame must not be left unattended. Number two, leaving a candle or a lamp. You might think, what's the problem with that? Suppose there's a cat, you know, cat runs across or a kid runs across or somebody, you know, somebody falls or whatever. So these things can happen. Uh, I remember uh, my first year, first week as IMA president, I had to go and attend a public program at uh, Tamaram Junction. Um, it was organized by the Blood Donors Forum. And they had put a stage in the middle of the road where there was a space. That's fine. And they kept all these lamps, you know, these oil lamps, all around where we were sitting. And it was just an inferno waiting to happen. So, you know, I had to call some, some of them and say, look, you know, this is a profoundly unsafe thing that you've done. And they were looking at me as though, Dr. Dundam Mumbu Kanditale, you know, because people don't understand these things, you don't, you don't really, you don't really, you don't lead, uh, uh, you don't, you don't leave open flames where there's inflammable material. And once a fire breaks out, then uh, things can quickly go wrong. It is said that a fire can actually consume a home in under two minutes. Uh, this is mostly Western literature because their homes are more made of wood. But remember, many of our homes have curtains and furnishings that are made of. Uh, synthetic material and they are so fast to catch fire. So be very careful and it is these synthetic materials when they catch fire, they don't just produce fire, they produce a lot of poisonous gases that can actually kill you. So very important. So number four, keeping inflammable material near a heat source. That's the example I mentioned about the Tamaram Junction. Number five is overloaded electrical outlets. We have a habit of at least I have a habit of putting three or four or five or six or seven plugs onto one socket. It's a disaster waiting to happen, especially if there is plastic or there's a curtain nearby, it can suddenly catch fire. Uh, placing a heater near the curtain, you know, if, if, if you're in a cold, um, cold, cold, um, wherever, wherever cold area that you're visiting, you try a room heater, some room heaters uh, they have coils and these coils can be glowing and if the curtain is gently um, hanging around near the heater the curtain can catch fire uh, if you have a uh, if you have a, a clog dryer uh, failure to remove the lint from the dryer when those people who have actually who actually use a home dryer after a washing machine that's a lint filter and the lint filter has to be cleaned often because we don't remove the lint that the fire has out there. And um, it is said that a plastic bag fridge can catch fire more easily than a metal bag fridge. And then um, some people like to keep the dishwasher on when we go to sleep, not a good idea. It's always good to operate an electrical equipment when we are actually nearby, so we know if there's a problem. And those who've lived abroad will know that all of us have done this, blocking a fire alarm, because uh, these things are so sensitive to TAV, Dr. Arun is smiling. I know he's done it. I've done it. Indian cooking produces a lot of smoke and these things go off. And next thing you know, you'll have five fire engines coming into your apartment and everyone will be staring at you. So to avoid all that, sometimes we disable the fire smoke detector. That's a crime. In fact, if you're caught doing that, they'll give you a, they'll give you a hefty fine. So these are some of the home safety. Now I'll demonstrate. Um, see, when you're... Suppose you are you are, you are in a place and you, you are the only person who knows about fire and uh, everybody else is frail and somebody has fallen unconscious, just unconscious, and you need to carry that person out and there's nobody else. Right? Are you able to carry a person on your own? You can drag them. You know, that's one way to carry them. You can drag them, no problem. You can drag them by the feet. If you can't do anything, just drag them, okay? It doesn't matter what injury they get. Because at least they're out of danger. Dragging has the advantage, their head is always on the floor, so you know they're breathing uh, air. So, but I'll demonstrate how we can carry a person. All right, that's called a fireman's lift. Fireman's lift was taught to me by my friend and uh, Dr. Arun Vergis, our classmate. 
Dr. Dr. Arjun Mohan Das, who is a doctor in Texas, he taught me the fireman's lift. And in fact, we practice it in our class. So this is actually the fireman's lift. This is uh, uh, yours truly trying to demonstrate. Uh, we are doing a fire drill at our hospital, and I'm trying to explain what a fire drill is. So I'll just fast forward the video. So I'm asking for a volunteer so that I can carry them. See, I'm not a very big guy, but uh, I'm just showing you an expert. I'm, I'm just showing you a basic technique of how to carry carry someone. So uh, there's a, there are there are several methods to carry a person. So the the principle here is you don't need to be Arnold Schwarzenegger to be able to carry somebody on your shoulder. All right, it's about balance. You've seen very thin people carry heavy objects in the railway station. You've seen people do that. It's not because of strength. It's in Malayalam, they call it vasham. It's a it's a method of carrying. It's a technique. So I'll just show you a technique of carrying somebody. So obviously, uh, I'm facing a very large audience. So I'm under a little bit of performance pressure here because if I fail, then I'll be in. <laughs> I'll be jeered. All right. So I'm doing this live. Uh, this uh, at uh, Sunrise Hospital. So basically, there's a vasham of carrying somebody. I'm just using Joshi, who was our driver at that time. Those are the instructions. Uh, so, 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 um, so that is that is one method of carrying someone, and there are other methods. You can actually look up if you look up YouTube. Uh, there will be several videos that teach you different techniques of how to. Uh, so if somebody is lying on the ground, how to actually get them up and so on uh, when you're alone, when you're with two people, etc. All right. So that is a see the you can see uh, this is a picture of the Ubahar Cinema Fire. You might have you might remember the story from 1997, the Ubahar Cinema. It's it's like Shainoy's for Delhi, and Ubahar uh, caught fire. Unfortunately, many many people died, and you can see the this fireman actually is showing the fireman's lift. He's carrying a victim. So the advantage is you, you can you can both your hands are free, all right. So you can you can do things with your hand. Uh, you can actually you know go down a, a staircase if you want. So this this is one technique you can actually practice at home, uh, and it's it's a very it's a very it's a very easy thing to do, all right. So so that's again one of the life skills one should know. We all hear about short circuit, right? Whenever we hear about a fire, automatically a default sentence will come. The fire is believed to have been caused by a short circuit. So I'll just explain what exactly a short circuit here is. So that is that is my drawing there. Uh, I've drawn a battery and a bulb connected with wires. So normal current flow occurs through the wire and it goes through a load. So the current is actually making the bulb glow. Now let's imagine there is no heat at all because the current flow is normal. But now let's imagine if we connect these two like this. If we connect those two, an abnormal connection happens. And then what happens? The load suddenly goes away. There's no load. So all the current starts flowing so fast. When more current flows through a particular area, there's a lot of heat. And when there's heat, fire happens. And that is how a short circuit builds up. A short circuit need not always come as picturesquely as this. It can happen you know, in a pile of wires. But this is a fundamental principle of a short circuit. Which is why I said, if you see a lot of plugs that are plugged into an electrical outlet, and if it is not, if it if it if it's not very tidy, call an electrician and just make sure that they tidy it up nicely. So it's a uh, at your workplace, uh, these things can typically happen behind a computer in the dusty area behind a computer. There'll be plenty of wires and plenty of scope for short circuit. So we've got uh, about ten more minutes. So can I ask anyone, how would you treat? So if you're at work and suddenly your colleague comes to you and say, hey, there's a fire in my room. And you rush into the room, you see his computer is suddenly on fire and uh, there's smoke in the room and uh, you can see fire at the computer. What would you do? Tough the message. Absolutely, yeah. You would. The first thing to do, obviously, is to get a, you know, turn off the switch and also 
sent for the near remember we know where the fire extinguisher is and the correct way to put out an electrical fire is not to throw water on it all right it's very important to remember that you should never throw water on an electrical fire because what happens you get electrocuted all right so we don't want to do that and secondly not it's not a major priority but if you throw water on a computer that's burning you will definitely lose all the data that's what the experts say so if you want to save your computer and also save your own life get a fire extinguisher turn the electric uh, turn the main switch off so that is what the kid did in in bombay you know the kid was taught in school the teacher told told the kid when there's a electrical fire turn the main switch off so the kid remembered to do it so that again is presence of mind so these are some of the risk factors from a short circuit old wiring defective outlets uh, badly you know assembled stuff electrical cords located near a curtain very important pressed under a carpet so this again is uh, the uh, upahar cinema fire 59 people died and 110 people injured in a stampede and if you if you really investigate it uh, it's so tragic what happened was um there are many things that happened all right for one the fire exit one of the fire exits was apparently changed altered into a box they built a box in front of a fire exit so what was originally a fire exit they altered it without permission this is all news from the media obviously uh, whatever I, whatever info information i have is from what is published on it uh so to create extra room apparently they eliminated a fire exit and uh, apparently some of the fire exits were blocked because when a fire exit is not used very often people put stuff there you know old chairs and sofas and things they they, they sit there and, and 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 accumulate cobwebs right so we see that all the time so fire if there's a fire exit in a building please make sure that it's always clear and there's one other tragic example which is so horrible but i have to explain it here again a similar example when a movie theater or something caught fire people just ran for the fire exit so many people landed on the fire exit but they did not realize the fire ex fire exit was designed to open in inward in the inward direction so they tried to push it they tried to push it it would not open it was a fire it was a fire door that was designed only to open the wrong direction all of these people suffocated and died it's a very tragic example again just to show you that a little bit of presence of mind when we go there as um as a as a as a patron or when we go there or when we live there or when we operate or when we uh, use it as a workplace we have that added responsibility to make this place fire safe so uh, that's all i have uh, for the evening i think we finished that Uh, just eight zero nine. Fantastic talk, uh, Rajiv. Spell bound and on time also. Thank you. Any comments, uh, questions? Am, am I cut off from the audience completely? Uh, I can't see or hear anything from them. Can probably stop slide share then. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. I can see more people. Talk like that. Yeah. So, uh, so these are these are some tips you could share with, uh, you know, with whoever you you're close with, and also teach your staff. Um, Rajiv, yeah. yeah. Rajiv, can you uh, share some thoughts about uh, fire in a running car? I mean, uh, I mean, is there anything that uh, we should okay. do in periodic uh, maintenance? Or I mean, most of us now regularly service our cars with the with the official, uh, you know, uh, distributor. See, I, ideally, I don't do this. Ideally. You you should really have a fire extinguisher in your car. A pocket fire extinguisher must be there in the car, but that is there. But 
I'll tell you what I do in my car is uh, my wife always makes fun of me because the 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 most favorite store I have is the hardware store. I just love these hardware stores. I go in there and I look at all these nails and hammers and knives. So I keep buying things from these small small hardware stores. So I bought a couple of hammers for my car, tiny hammers, right? So uh, you might have read, read so a long time back. I wrote about how to escape from a car, you know, when it's when it's locked or underwater or uh, when when the lock comes on. Remember, all cars have central locking, and if a car has an el electrical malfunction, there's no way you can get out. I'll give you one example. Once I was driving down uh, to work, very briefly, near the Adapalli Palli area. Uh, early morning rush hour, there were many people crowding around one red Sandro-like car and they were banging on this car. And I thought people were angry and they were trying to, um, you know, to hurt someone. So I got down from my car. I went there and I said, what happened? They said, there's a woman inside and this woman is unconscious. So I looked inside and this woman is slumped on the wheel and she's completely unconscious. So then I thought, okay, it's a small car. Let's just break the glass. So I carry a paperweight in my car, you know, because I thought a, a solid paperweight is good enough for the glass. So I, I walked to my car like a big expert. I said, I'll bring something. I, I bring the solid glass paperweight and I bang this paperweight on a car. That glass won't budge. It's impossible to break the car's glass. So that's when I decided I should get a hammer. Okay, so that's one. So finally, these people, we, they broke the gla uh, glass using a large granite piece. And the woman had undergone some kind of a surgical procedure and had just had a vasovagal. So it wasn't anything serious. So we packed her off to the hospital where she came from. And also I called the doctor. So that again, but the moral of the story is a car glass is impossible to break from outside and from inside, remember. So it's on the one hand, it is safe. You're, nobody can really break, your, break into your car from outside unless they have a sharp specific device that can actually break the glass. But if you're trapped in the car, when there's a fire, the, the biggest risk of a fire is you're trapped in the car, your central lock comes on this, you can't get out. So invest in a hammer and keep it in the, in the glove box. And this is something I do, so I can't, I can't preach something I don't do. I, I don't have space in my, in my car for a fire extinguisher, no matter how small it is. But I'm sure you can order them online. Yeah. Long story to a short question. Yeah. You can mix saliva, the salt and saliva, and throw it in the glass. With a little pressure, it will break. Okay. The wow. people, uh, the thieves are all using this technology. <laughs> salt on glass? Salt, saliva. You spit on the salt. Have you, have you tried in the end of the day? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is seen in the uh, videos you get in WhatsApp, but I, I, I don't believe it. Uh, I have given the description. How yeah, they are we'll, working. We'll, we'll, we'll look it up. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay. You can actually take off your headrest. That ah. is some uh, some videos. I don't know whether that is also true. Uh, my headrest. Okay. You can remove the headrest. Should you ask me to take off my head? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah not a headrest. The, but even that, I... I, I Personally, I don't. I'm not convinced it's going to help you. You've got two sharp, it, uh, sharp metal. You know. Yeah, and that's the nearest you can do. That's the nearest. Yeah, you yeah. Do. You don't have, you don't have anything. Yeah. Now headdress are removable. Like. You and know. if you, if you don't have anything, you know what I wrote in that article is again. Uh, this is survivor's tip. You can lie down across the front seats, bring your knees to your chest all the way, and give it a solid kick. Like you know, you do this. And because your your hamstrings are the most powerful muscles, and if you can just bring, you can do that curl up fetal position across the front seat, and then punch Absolutely. with your feet. I don't know if it'll break, but just I'm not convinced punch. because these cars are built sturdy. Doctor Rajiv, you are in a house or in an office, and you find a fire in a room. Is it? Um, uh, should, uh, do we ex uh, are, do you expect us to close the doors of the room so that the fire doesn't come out and there's carbon dioxide building in? Yes, yes. The 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 immediate thing will be if you have a, an extinguisher or uh, like Dr. Narayan said, if you can turn the switch off, 
once you turn the switch off you can actually pour water on it no problem remember on, you don't pour water when the electricity is running so if you can, if you are able to extinguish it it's great but if you can't get out especially if it is one of these you know these houses which are high tech and the, but make sure there is no one in that room plastic on it yeah make sure there's no one in the in the room also yeah especially when uh, you are changing the gas cylinder sometimes there will be that uh, smell which comes out so you're not a little you are not completely sure whether you fixed it correctly or there is some leak so so I'll, i'll take you to the lpg situation lpg is colorless it's it's odorless actually we know that right lpg has no odor it's it's mixed with mercaptan which has that peculiar odor which is unmistakable so that's why they mix it so uh, our gas cylinders are so safe they're built safe that it's almost impossible for them to escape even though we get a little bit of leak but the experts say that if you ever smell significant amount of gas get out and call someone don't hang around um the scary thing is even if you turn a switch on it can theoretically cause a spark and it seems that even a refrigerator because it turns on and off it can theoretically spark a fire those are some theoretical aspects but i don't know if these things really happen the correct thing to do open all the doors and windows get out don't hang around and call somebody that's a textbook answer to the question uh, dr rajiv uh, the, the talk was excellent but in a hospital setup we have got if you are in the theater and if there is a patient on the table there are a lot of uh, uh, the safety issues as well as ethical issues so how do you manage it very good question which is why a hospital fire drill is very important and we must lean on the management to make sure that all the fire safety protocols are followed so uh, that's one second is you remember the amri hospital fire in calcutta yeah amri hospital fire amri hospital amri is a, was a a uh, large i think it's a seven story complex a modern hospital which is fully air conditioned centrally air conditioned and the fire broke out at night and uh, many people died suffocated to death from smoke it was a fire that killed them so uh, so that that's an example uh, that we can follow but uh, but uh, there are heroic stories of nurses who have uh, carried these patients to safety and there are stories of nurses who succumbed after that so uh, you know all that can be part of a hospital drill and if you call the fire department they'll be only too happy to come and give you a drill they are such good trainers in fact one of the reasons i got into this fire safety is because i met a very good trainer called anand kumar he came to our hospital and you know he 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 did some demonstrations and the way he he presented was so good i thought you know maybe i should get into it also so Uh, if you call the fire department please do they will come and uh, explain it to the staff and they will look at the area professionally and give their opinion make sure you got a proper fire license before you call them very important Other, yeah. otherwise they are going to point out <laughs> what all you don't have <laughs> yeah, i mean these these things are important we we scrounge so much on 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 these uh, on these basic safety things but we are very particular about so many other things right? <laughs> true very true keep our seat belt on yeah, yeah. <laughs> fire fire is is it's just unbelievable fire, fire is fast fire is furious fire is unpredictable and must be respected and nobody's immune that's a that's a tragedy I think that more and more people living in flats. I think this is all the more important. Yeah. 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 People in uh, people in the uh, in the high rise and also in the in the building. I, I don't know. There must be some sort of organization, right? In each association, uh, residents association. Uh, the chief of whoever that is must be absolutely merciless uh, in terms of enforcing these. and also some training sessions are always helpful they are, they are funny children love these and i think i think that story about a child from mumbai the 10 year old is just so dear it's like such a lovely story that she actually did something 
when when the when when there was a crisis is it part of the uh, school curriculum uh, what to do in fire etc is it part of our school curriculum i don't know i don't know i i don't know about that Does i don't think know? so i think i don't think none of our children have really ഗവൺമെന്റ് ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് ഇസ് ദ മോസ്റ്റ് കറപ്റ്റ് ഫയർ ആൻഡ് സേഫ്റ്റി ഇസ് വൺ ഓഫ് ദ മോസ്റ്റ് കറപ്റ്റ് ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് സോ ദാറ്റ്സ് ദി അതർ പ്രോബ്ലം everybody gets their license by paying money yeah but uh, but our fire department they are the smartest you know like you know they, you they know, are good yeah, yeah they are absolutely no, smart yeah the other part Dynamic, the other part is very people. very very good yeah yeah okay. okay rajiv thank you so much You're that welcome. was a fantastic evening and i think youtube live also a lot of people have watched oh that's good to and know, yeah. Uh, and yeah this uh, is our this is our 165 165 okay. people back so the average watch time for day so yeah, all these people are going to watch huh? 8.23 is not bad okay good good <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and it will remain on our youtube channel okay good 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 so yeah, i guess so yeah, it's, a, it's a little bit of an introduction it is by no means a complete training but it's a, it's a nice nice to have an introduction and the, some of the fun facts as well okay okay i'm sure you'll have things to do in your meeting as well so is it yeah. okay if i take <laughs> leave yeah 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 no, so right. what i will do is you can uh, thank right. uh, rajiv gopal and yeah